Hi, and welcome back to Dev Explaining channel. Today's video is about uh, record patterns and pattern matching in Java 21. And unlike the virtual threads, this is something that might have an effect uh, on any bit of Java code you are going to write. So I think it's worth a video. Let's see. Let's get started. So Java 21 was recently released. Uh, it's a big one again, uh, full of uh, new features. Uh, some of the features are, are still in preview, but I'm going to now stick to non-preview features of record patterns and pattern matching for Switch. So uh, there has been some kind of preview versions of these earlier, in earlier editions of Java. Some things have changed and I'm not going to waste time with how things were, but just dive directly into how things are right now. So if we start from uh, record patterns, I just want to give you the highlight. And as always, the links are below the video. If you get curious, you can, you can dive in. But what was the motivation? Well, uh, in Java, we have had for a long time, we have had the instance of operator and uh, we have been able to check the type of an object. But with Java 16 and of course Java 17 level as well, uh, we got a little bit, a tiny kind of improvement here. So we are able to check the type of an object and uh, then give it a variable name and then we can skip the unnecessary typecast here. So this is kind of old news already. But now that we are going onwards and we are going to have a record, what we are able to do is uh, deconstruct the record with this one. So earlier code uh, quite often might be dealing with something like let's grab an object, then we would uh, typecast it and then we would be picking up some things from inside it based on the typing. And uh, this is all fine and it will still be working. However, the deconstruction is looking something like this one. So now we are going to be able to say uh, I have a variable and uh, I'm, I'm checking if it's instance of point, but if it is, let's deconstruct it. So I want to extract these features from inside it and I want to refer to these by X and Y, and then I'm able to use them here. So I just saved a few lines of code. So I think this is already pretty cool and fun stuff. Let's see my own example of this one. So I wanted to give you something that's not straight from the Java documentation. This is one of my earlier examples. I just verified it to work with Java 21. So surprisingly, I have a record called YouTube video and YouTube video record has only one field, it's the title here. So using the uh, JEP uh, 440 uh, record pattern means that I'm able to uh, create my record here, and then I'm able to, well, here is the kind of instance of variation of this. So I'm going to uh, check my object typing, and if it's YouTube video, I'm going to deconstruct the title so I can access it directly. So I just saved unnecessary typecast and hopefully made my code a little bit easier to read. It depends on if you're up to speed with Java 21 features. If you are, it might be kind of more clear for you. Likewise, we are now able to do this with switch case. So switch my object. And if it's YouTube video, let's deconstruct it. So we are able to use the title directly here, right? More on this part a bit later, but I hope you got the idea of how to use record patterns and think about uh, a record deconstruction when you when you see code like this one. Let's go back to the uh, JDK 21 because the bigger feature that's now out of preview, so it's now ready for you to use. That's the pattern matching for switch. And this is a big one. There is kind of a lot to unpack. So I'm not going to read you the kind of uh, specification from here. Instead, let's dive straight to the uh, examples that I have for you. So we have a few fun parts here. Uh, this is, by the way, a combination of many things from earlier ones, so uh, I, I, I'm already anticipating some comments on my channel. Comments are always, by the way, very welcome. Do leave them if you have questions or want to comment on something. Sometimes people even find tiny mistakes and, and fix them, so thanks for those as well. But 
I anticipate comments like, no, this one was in Java 16 and this one was in 17 and yada yada. Uh, not interested in that one. I want to show you what's the full power of uh, which statement in Java 21. So I'm freely combining stuff from earlier versions of Java all together. So I'm just going to show you how it looks like compared to something like Java 1 version or something like those. Okay. So with that out of the way, what can we do with record uh, pattern? So, sorry, pattern matching. Well, we can do the boring old switch case. By the way, uh, I didn't even remember this myself, but in the very first version of Java, um, even strings were not supported. So you could only mostly uh, compare like primitive uh, numeric types against exact matches. But we have gone such a long way ever since then. So Java switch statement used to suck back then, but it's now so much better. So here is a combination of few really cool things that have happened ever since uh, those days. So uh, we can, first of all, uh, we can check against typing. So I'm saying that case string s. So I'm checking that if it's a string type, and by the way, I'm using the um, kind of uh, kind of assigning a variable for it immediately, so I'm able to skip that type cast. So I'm grabbing the value from inside if it's a string, and then I'm able to do string-like things here. And uh, then this is interesting. So this is the guarded pattern. I'm able to carry onwards and say when. And by the way, when seems like a new keyword, but if you used to have variables called when. Uh, no worries, uh, they, they wouldn't become illegal. Uh, this is only applicable in this kind of uh, substatement. So when you do the case string something, then you can use the when keyword here. And when keyword activates card pattern, so we can do kind of a condition here after the type cost. So when it's a string and when the string length is larger than five, then we activate this part and then we have this kind of quick, uh, quick kind of operator. So we used to do, we used to kind of need to do a block here, and then uh, there was a moment when we used yield keyword here. But those days are gone. So we have arrow operator. So I can do like if this is a match, then we with the arrow we we just directly go here and we execute what needs to be done here. So obviously you can still do your blocks here. So you can still do the old style, but sometimes th this might be a bit more readable, but I think that's up to you. But uh, as I mentioned, a lot of kind of additions here, and I'm combining everything from the earlier versions, but kind of the pattern matching part is this one. This is the cool stuff that I'm able to do match against, uh, against type or pattern, and then I'm able to carry onwards and combine some conditions for the value and I do automated typecast to make this a little bit le le easier and less verbose, so it should be easier to read and understand. I think this is pretty cool, and it's going to make Switch a whole lot of better. Then, um, perhaps it was a string, but it didn't match the guard pattern. I have a condition for that here. So this is more general term. Then, perhaps it was not a string at all. Perhaps it was integer. So then I do integer things here. And then this is really cool one, but we used to have so much trouble with null, null kind of values before, because what if the O is null? So now we can do a case null, and I can catch that pesky null pointer exception very easily. And finally, uh, we have to cover all the bases still with switch case. So I need to cover all the possible conditions and very easy way to kind of combine anything else would be default. Now, I'm not going to dive into this one here, but remember that we also have sealed, sealed uh, classes right now, so we can define an interface and define what, what classes will be able to implement it, and therefore uh, we are able to kind of cover all the conditions and avoid using default. So just mentioning that here, but I, I'm not going to dive into that one today. But anyways, you have to still cover all the conditions, but if you cannot easily, otherwise you can do the default statement in the end. So how about if we run uh, this bit of code? So I'm going to run this little utility function and pass, it, pass in, sorry, 
I need to import this one. So I'm going to pass in uh, nicely uh, a string that's a short one. So we should be sticking to my guard pattern number one. And then I'm going to have a longer string and then it's going to flow hopefully here. And then we have an integer. And by the way, I actually have int. So let's see if, how that works. And then I'm going to do date, uh, so something else, and then I'm going to do null value. So let's see how these, these work. Yes, so before I run this little bit of code, I want to explain one more thing. So uh, watching my videos, I do a lot of cutting edge stuff. So I'm always playing with the Java virtual machines that are not uh, kind of well supported yet. So uh, I actually, in the morning, I was running Microsoft uh, um, Java extension. So if you go to the VS Code extensions and you, you find something for Java, I typically have been running my code with this language support for Java by Red Hat. And uh, that's included in the Microsoft extension pack for Java. And it's actually using Eclipse tooling. However, that's not way, way not, not up to date with Java 21 yet. And last I checked, uh, we need to wait for the support for months still. So in the morning, I was checking all this and I figured out that there is also Java Oracle support. And uh, that would be the Java platform support for Oracle. And I actually disabled my uh, Microsoft or Red Hat uh, support for Java and I enabled this one. So with this one, only trick is that you need to have Maven projects and uh, not sure if you love them or not. But I created a Maven project and activated this plugin. And that's why I don't have so much red here, because it's using the Java C compiler and catching the syntax that's rather new here. OK. But anyways, um, I'm going to just simply run it on command line right now. So let's run Maven. And uh, I can do well. I, I'm actually going to cheat a little bit. So I have the pattern matching cheat line here. In case you want to do something similar, if you have a very, very simple Maven POM, the most minimal one, running with uh, uh, Java or uh, Java version 21. And then if you run it with Maven, there's pretty cool option to exec Java and then you pass in the main class. So this way you can have precise control on the Java version and any libraries you want to run. So I can combine all this and just run my record pattern demo like this one. So doing all this enables me to run the kind of latest version of Java with no uh, problems or no uh, warnings. And then I'm able to also, by the way, I ran the wrong one, <laughs> but I'm able to compile my code without getting all that red stuff all around the place. And things will obviously get better. So the extensions will catch up with full goodness of Java 21. But right now, this was the convenient way for me while recording this video to run the stuff. So um, as I mentioned, I run the short string and it's catching up and figuring this is a short string doing something with it. I run the long string, it's uh, figuring out this is a long string with the same switch case um, expression. And then I'm able to do uh, with integer, it's picking up integer, even though I'm actually passing in int. So this is the magic of auto boxing taking place. Uh, I'm able to grab the, grab the something else condition with something else. And then I'm able to grab the null condition. All these were nicely covered when I was running the code. So I think this was my short form of what every coder needs to know about switch case right now. So this is the modern Java 21 level switch case and get, get prepared to see a lot of this. Now, I wanted to wrap things up with two little bonus tips and tricks. So one would be, uh, this is not something that came along with Java 21, but un un unless you have uh, updated Java recently, you might not be aware of this. So that's why I'm mentioning that which is now able to return a value easily. So you are able to just return a value instead of executing a little bit of code. And I wanted to point this out because this is awesome for any functional programmer who doesn't really like side effects. So in my earlier example, I was just doing something in the function, but I don't like to do functions like this. So I would rather have my functions get some parameters, return some values, so they are easily testable. 
and uh, that's well supported by by switch case and by the way it has been for quite some time but you can combine that with all the goodness i just demonstrated so just if you were not aware of this one please start using this one it makes switch really really good let's um, unlock one bit of my code and i'm passing in a list and grabbing whatever it returns and let's run my code once more just to kind of give you a nice memory footprint of this one so uh, i think uh, combining all these makes switch really really useful for me now my last bonus tip before i uh, wrap up my video and by the way do remember to like my video if you like my video click the little buttons they make all the difference but I'm leaving you with one, uh, one bit that is related, but it's still in preview. So I don't have a code example of this one. Remember that if you want to play with preview features, uh, you need to activate them when, when you are running the code. So your co compiler will be probably complaining and it's a little bit more difficult to run. But I wanted to point out that related to what I was just doing here, this uh, JEP443 uh, is going to at some uh, kind of uh, future Java version. We are going to get out of preview version of this one. Right now, this is just preview. So it might change and it might go away, but probably it's going to become generally available. So uh, just what I wanted to point out is that sometimes you don't need the... Uh, deconstruction parameters so let's say we have a point and you only would need x coordinate not the y one so the kind of uh, jeb is uh, recommending to add something that would allow you to use underscore and i know i know if you have been coding with kotlin or scala you are well aware of things like this but this might be coming to java is my point so sometimes you want to deconstruct and you don't want to bother about all the parameters you just want to grab one or two and leave some unnamed and that might be coming your way in future java versions perhaps java 22 or something like that so that's all i wanted to say to wrap things up and as always uh, please let me know how you like my videos leave comments click the like buttons be active subscribe to my channel and if you have some requests on other java 21 related or any other features you would like to see me cover let me know on the comment section and if you saw some fancy things i did here uh, i know they went uh, past really fast but you can always pause the video uh, to kind of see what code i was dealing with there i tried to use large font and be really slow and explain them thoroughly so you can unlock all this goodness and start using it in, in your day-to-day -day work but as always thanks for watching the video and see you in the next one bye bye